We now come to April 2nd, AD 33. That's Thursday, which some churches refer to as Monday Thursday. It's Passover week, so Jesus instructs his disciples to secure a Paschal lamb and to go and get an upper room in the city of Jerusalem so that they can celebrate their own Passover supper together. Later that evening, Jesus is arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, and so begin the Jewish trials of Jesus. So as we explore this day, we can ask a few questions. Was it significant that Jesus' last week took place during Passover week? What is the relationship between the Last Supper and the Passover meal? And why couldn't the Jewish leaders have simply handled all of this on their own? Why did they need to go and get the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, involved? The celebration of Passover was one of the great moments of the Jewish religious year. Of course, they were celebrating their deliverance from Egypt when God brought them out of their slavery, kind of created them as a people, and started them on the road to their own land. It was important to be in Jerusalem because only in Jerusalem in the temple could you actually have the Passover lambs slain. Uh, that uh, were, the, were, of course, the centerpiece of the Jewish family meals. So those lambs were slain uh, on the, the day before the, the Passover and then eaten that, that evening, uh, just as perhaps Jesus and the disciples uh, celebrated their own Passover meal as kind of a family of people together on that Thursday night as well. Passover was a celebration in anticipation of Yahweh's rescue of his people, his redemption from the hand of Pharaoh. Typically Jews ate at a table to eat, but not the Passover, not most festive meals. They would recline on the floor with pillows. Why? Well, during the Exodus, when they came out of Egypt, they didn't have tables to sit at. They lay down on the desert floor and ate. Lying down while eating became an expression of your freedom. So when the disciples take the Passover with Jesus, they're lying down looking forward to that day when Yahweh would grant, finally grant freedom to his people. So it's looking back to the Exodus in the past but looking ahead to the exodus to come. Now Jesus is saying, this is a new covenant, a new way that God's going to relate to his people through my death. When Jesus was arrested uh, late on that Thursday night, a series of what I guess I would call judicial proceedings unfolded. During the nighttime, there was a gathering of the Sanhedrin, the high Jewish authority where all of the Jewish officials were together, kind of interviewing Jesus perhaps with a view to formulating an official charge. You know, what can we charge this guy with that's gonna stick? What's gonna work? This might have been an unofficial proceeding because at nighttime, usually the Jews were forbidden from, from holding official trials. And it's of course in that context, you might remember in Mark 14 and parallels, that they decide, oh, Jesus has committed a blasphemy. And so that gave them their sort of official basis to go ahead. However, it turns out the three years before a Good Friday, the first Good Friday, uh, Pontius Pilate removed from them the jus gladii, the right of execution, on orders from an anti-Semitic patron of his in Rome. And for this reason now, Pilate and the Romans alone had the right of capital punishment. Previously, of course, the Sanhedrin would not even have taken Jesus' case to Pilate but now he had to hear it. 